We're back on the air. Follow me. You know, looking at the inside of this race car, it's almost like a walk down memory lane for me because when I first came into racing, late 70s, early 80s, this is what the inside of a race car looked like. Plain, simple, not a lot going on. I mean, you look here at the road cage, look at the seat. It's almost like a stock appearing dash with a few gauges and a few switches. You see the fire extinguisher here, switch there. You see it right here, a few switches there. There's not a lot of clutter. Even still has a stock floor pan. Now, I promise you, no one has embraced new technology like I've tried to embrace it, but this right here, this is old school. I love this. Larry, your talents, as we've all seen, have been on the racetrack, tuning NASCAR, behind the booth, letting everybody know what's going on the track, but I'd like to introduce you to our newest race truck driver. Tell me, how did that come about? Yeah, and I want to say this, it was a one race. You saw two things, my first and my last, but back in July, Charlotte Motor Speedway, including a road course, I ran the Champ Truck World Series. I drove a bobtail truck just like this, but I want to say this, I had three goals. I wanted to have fun, and I did. I didn't want to interfere with their championship battle, and I didn't, and I wanted to stay safe. I'm standing here, so that was obviously my biggest goal I wanted to accomplish. So what you're saying is what place did you finish when the checkered flag dropped? I had a top five finish, but I won't tell you there was only eight trucks in the race. <laughs> you know, Larry, I think I was in middle school when spinners were all the rage, but it looks like they're coming back, but in a reinvented style. You know what? Just like Larry Mack, spinners never go away, and they'll <laughs> always be cool. Almost every other booth that you walk by at SEMA, there's always something neat and cool or some sexy car, but there's also a lot of behind-the-scenes pieces of equipment. Now, this is a tube and bender. Now, what? What would I know about a tubing bender? You just think about a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series car, all the feet of roll bars that are in that car, and they all had to be bent by a tubing bender. Now, the one thing I will say, tubing benders, since I started bending tubes, come a long way. And in my book, that might be a sexy car, but this is a sexy tubing bender. You know, even though I do my broadcasting almost 24-7, I still like to get away and relax. And you wouldn't possibly see me on an ATV, but I do enjoy them. And there's all types out there. Now this is an ATV, but it's called a quad ski. And you know why? Because you can have it on land. You don't have to buy a jet ski. It also will go on water. It's amphibious. So you know what? You don't have to buy two. You can buy just one. And the great thing about it, Chevrolet is promoted by my buddy, Kid Rock, me and the kid. I think sometimes we take our shock absorbers on our car for granted. I know with a NASCAR Sprint Cup Series car, you can make or break the performance, but the shock absorbers, it controls the ride, it controls the spring. Now just look how far shock absorbers have come when you look at the King off-road racing shocks. I mean, they almost look like missiles. Look how big they are. They have the exterior canister, the pressurized shock. You have gas-filled shocks. So in my book, it's endless what someone can do with shocks, especially when it comes to off-road racing.